In the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Ghost, amen. We are at the threshold of the season of Lent, and in today's Gospel, our Lord is preparing his 12 disciples, or 12 apostles. He tells them, we're going down to Jerusalem, where I'm going to be handed over to the Gentiles. I will be mocked, spit upon, scourged, and they will put me to death. And on the third day, I will rise again from the dead. And the apostles understood none of this. Christ couldn't be more plain. He couldn't have been more open. And yet they couldn't see, they could not understand. They could see physically with their eyes, but spiritually, all of this was hidden from them. And it was hidden because they were not ready to believe all that Christ has said. And in today's gospel, we see a man who is physically blind, but yet has spiritual clarity. He can see in the spiritual realm, for they tell him that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by, but yet he calls out, Son of David, have mercy on me. He sees Christ's divinity, even though he's blind. And in today's epistle, St. Paul is telling us that it doesn't matter what sacrifices, what penance, what great things we do in this world if we don't have charity. And so I say to us today, the season of Lent is coming upon us. We are going down into the season of Lent. It is a time of penance, a time of mortification, a time of self-denial. And many of us look forward to this with a kind of foreboding. Like St. Peter, oh no, this can't be. This is too hard. I don't want to do this. I don't want to go into the season of Lent. And the rest of the world is going to be celebrating with their Mardi Gras, their parties, the celebration of springtime coming. And it's going to be filled with joy and we're going to be doing our penances. And St. Paul says, it won't matter if you do all these good things and you don't have charity in your heart. I think very often we look at the season of Lent, the season of Advent, as it is our punishment. You see, I was bad, I sinned, and I offended God, and now this is my punishment. For my punishment, I can't eat in between meals. I can only have one full meal a day, the other two not adding up to a full meal. And I have to give this up or I'm going to do that. And it is my punishment. And we don't look forward to our punishment. But pride can get in there and say, well, I'm going to be a man about it and I'm going to do my penance and I'm going to brave through. That's stubbornness, pride, vanity. So I can tell, tell the rest of the world, look at me. See all the penance that I'm doing. Or if I'm not going to broadcast it to the world, at least in my own mind, I can say, look at all I've done. Look at the great sacrifices that I have made. All because I was such a terrible sinner, I did all this great penance, all this great mortification. And if that's our attitude, we're wasting our time. It doesn't matter how great these acts are in the eyes of the world, materially speaking. If charity is lacking in our heart, it's nothing. It's empty. It's all vanity of vanity, a chase after the wind. So as we look forward to the season of Lent, we need to put that charity back into our hearts. We need to put that faith back into our hearts. I'm going to enter this season of Lent for the love of Christ. I'm going to deny myself because Christ has denied himself for me. It needs to be motivated by love, not so much a sense of uh, punishment or getting our just desserts or this is whatever it may be that is negative. 
I want you to think of the season of Lent as a positive experience. We are going down to Jerusalem. The Son of Man is going to be handed over to the Gentiles. We are going into the season of Lent. The world, the other religions, are going to try to tempt us with all their celebrations of the upcoming spring, their Mardi Gras, their carnival, their festivals, their celebrations, their Super Bowl, whatever it may be. Well, I guess that'll be over, won't it? You're safe. <laughs> the world is going to be tempting us. We're going to be handed over to the world, and the world is going to show us all these material things to tempt us, just as Christ was handed over to the Gentiles. Christ says, I will be mocked, spit upon, and I tell you, if you are a true Catholic, the world is going to mock you. You really think that blessing your food is all that important? Do you think it does anything? The world is going to mock, the world is going to laugh, the world is going to spit upon you. Who do you think you are? And the world, the devils, are going to attack you. Just as Christ was spit upon. The world is going to mock you as Christ was mocked. Your faith is going to be ridiculed, maybe not openly, but behind your back, and you know it's going on, and the devil's going to suggest to you that this is what they're saying, this is what they're thinking. It's going to happen. And how will we respond to it? Will we respond as Christ did? Turn the other cheek with true charity in our hearts to pray for them. Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. You can't be serious. You're not going to eat meat on Friday. All during the season of Lent, you're going to abstain from meat except for once a day <laughs> at your main meal. Oh, come on. The temptations are going to be around you. The mockery is going to be around you. And they may not be the physical scourgings that Christ have received, but they will, in a sense, be the spiritual scourging. We are going into Lent. These things are going to happen, but that's not the worst of it. Christ says they will crucify him and put him to death. And if we are truly Catholic, if we are truly putting our heart and soul into entering this season of Lent with true love of God in our hearts, so that it will be profitable to us, we are going to die to the world, a spiritual death to this world, that we really have become indifferent to whether the world strikes us, what the world says, what the world thinks. And that requires us to see it coming, to be prepared. We have no excuse. The 12 apostles did not want to believe that God, the Son of God, could suffer these things. But yet the Son of God tells them clearly, this is what we're going to do. This is what's going to happen to me. And I do this. I'm going down to Jerusalem willingly for the love of you. Because I love you, I'm going to suffer all of these things. No one takes the life of Christ. He lays it down freely. And I say to us, 
No one should force us into the season of Lent. No one should force us to do penance. No one should be forcing us to abstain. No one should be forcing us to mortify the senses. We should freely give them up as Christ freely gave up his life. And when there's true charity in our hearts, we don't grow angry with our friends and neighbors who mock the faith, but we bear with it patiently as Christ bore with all of this patiently. We are entering the season of Lent. We see it coming. I'm telling you what it's going to be like. I'm telling you not so much what I am going to suffer, but what we are all going to suffer if we're truly following Christ. And I'm suggesting to us that we need not enter through fear with dread in our hearts, but with true love in our hearts. We need to be able to say it is an honor, it is a privilege for me to embrace this cross with Christ and willingly embrace that cross, willingly go down to Jerusalem, willingly put up with our friends and relatives, our neighbors, as they laugh at our penitential season, our penitential acts, not to become angry with them when they constantly tempt us with their ham sandwich at work. <laughs> but to be patient with them, to love them, and to really be grateful for them bringing the ham sandwich to tempt us is an opportunity for us to great, gain greater merit. Don't get angry. Don't hate them. Just thank God for the opportunity that that temptation is an occasion for us to gain, gain greater merit. It is an opportunity for us to follow Christ more perfectly, for us to make another little sacrifice, that little splinter of the cross should be welcomed by us. We should be grateful and far from hating or detesting or becoming angry with our neighbor, we should thank them. Thank you for this temptation. Thank you for this trial. Thank you for this difficulty. For you're testing my metal. You're testing to see what I'm made of. You're showing me perhaps my weakness. But in showing me my weakness, you're giving me the opportunity to get stronger, to grow in grace and virtue. And this is something we should thank them for, perhaps not openly, but in the depths of our hearts, because we truly love God. And it is a wonderful opportunity that God has given us through them to follow him more carefully, more closely. Christ did not curse the Gentiles because he was handed over to them. He didn't curse the Gentiles because they spit upon him and mocked him. He prayed for them. <coughs> Charity is in his heart. And I say, in this season of Lent, along with St. Paul, let us look at our good deeds, make our resolutions, embrace this season of penance with true charity in our hearts. Or if we're just going through the motions, if we're just forcing ourselves through pride or vanity because it's the letter and we're going to follow, follow the letter of the law and charity is lacking, it profits us nothing. And I truly want this season of Lent to be profitable for us all.
do these penances, embrace them, but do it with true love in your heart. Benedictio Dei Omnipotentis, Patris, Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen.